Bob, I've always heard over at the museum here about the Latin American influence, but I did not understand that the great Roberto Clemente had some really cool and close ties to one of the greatest Negro leaguers of all time. Yes, he did. The legendary Monty Irvin. And for those who may not be familiar with Monty Irvin's story, Monty Irvin could have very easily been the first to break baseball's color barrier. He was actually the Negro League's owner's choice. If anyone was going to break the color barrier, they wanted it to be Monty Irvin. Monty Irvin was a superstar for the Newark Eagles who could flat out do it all. I say all the time, I wish Major League Baseball had gotten Monty Irvin when he was 20, 21 years old. Well, when Monty goes to Puerto Rico, he is a star in Puerto Rico, and a young Roberto Clemente falls in love with Monty Irvin. And so Roberto Clemente Jr. Tells me this sto- told me this story. He says that his father used to carry Monty Irvin's uniform to the ballpark. And of course, if you carried the player's uniform, they let you in the game for free. And so he also says that it would be Monty Irvin that would give his father his first real baseball glove. And Monty Irvin idolized, I mean, Roberto Clemente idolized Monty Irvin, and he wanted to be Monty Irvin. Well, when Roberto Clemente dies tragically in that plane accident, helping out those in Nicaragua, as fate would have it. And I can tell you, this only happens in baseball. Roberto Clemente and the great Monty Irvin are inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame on the same day. Coincidence. Yeah, but it only happens in baseball. It only happens in baseball. But it also reminds us that every hero has a hero. And for Roberto Clemente, his hero was the great Monty Irvin. That's fascinating. I never knew that. The other thing I didn't know that you were telling me about was Roberto Clemente's Dodger ties. And there's an interesting story here as well. We think about him with the Pirates. We think about the the defense. We think about the humanitarian and, of course, his tragic death. But I don't know that we hear a whole lot about his time with the Dodgers. Yeah, he starts in the Dodgers organization. And he was the one that got away. And when he was with the Dodgers, and, and this is part of the challenge when uh, those Spanish-speaking athletes come to this country and vice versa, when those Negro League players were going to their countries, the language barrier. And so Roberto was having some difficulties, didn't speak very good English. So his interpreter was the great Joe Black. Joe Black had played in the Negro Leagues for the Baltimore Elite Giants and had gone to Morgan State University, had become fluid in Spanish, uh, and would absolutely speak on behalf of a rather shy Roberto Clemente because, again, he wasn't comfortable because he didn't speak the language. And then, of course, he would get away and move into the Pirates organization and then fashion one of the greatest major league careers uh, of all time and, of course, tremendous humanitarian. But there are those connections uh, that tie Roberto Clemente back to the Negro Leagues. You said the early years he he would have to go to the restaurant and, and almost do some signals to order his food. Well, I remember Buck talking about playing in Mexico and he didn't speak Spanish. Now, Buck would become very fluent in Spanish later on, but he says when he first went to Mexico and he wanted to order something, he would go to the restaurant and he would make this motion and they knew he wanted fish. Yeah, they knew he wanted fish. And I remember my dear friend from Cuba, the great Armando Vasquez. And Armando says the first words he ever learned to speak in English was ham and eggs. (laughs) And so guess what he had at every meal? Ham and eggs. <laughs> it's just fascinating because as we watch guys like Carlos Hernandez learn the, the English language and interpreters and, and, and all of that, that, that you could go back to a Buck O'Neill and those even in the Negro Leagues doing the same going over to countries like Mexico or going over to Puerto Rico. That was that shared history. And I think, Joel, that is why we have this bond that was created by baseball, or in this case, baseball. Yeah. yeah. Different spelling, slightly different pronunciation, same universal game. Absolutely.